What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. Now in today's video, we'll be demonstrating how to enable the Google Assistant by voice on Chromebook. Now this is a helpful video if you've just purchased a Chrome OS device and the Google Assistant isn't working by voice. Now the reason for this may be your Google Assistant is set to on recommended by default. On recommended means your Google Assistant will work only by voice when your device is plugged in or charging. Now this is okay for a Chrome base such as the HP 21.5 inch rotatable unit we unboxed and reviewed, but not so great for a device that runs on battery. So when working with a device that runs on battery, we want to make sure that the Google Assistant is set to always on. Now this video is featured on the Chromebook Chrome base playlist, so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. And for reference, I'm using the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5, a most glorious large screen tablet with detachable keyboard. As always, we only feature products or services I buy, use, or am interested in. Now you can find items like the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5 at the Amazon storefront link in the description below. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So let's start with a quick test of the Google Assistant with default settings on the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. So as you can see, we're not getting a response. So let's talk about how to fix this. We're going to scroll to the bottom right hand corner where the clock is and we're going to click on that and that pulls up a dock and then we're going to look for a gear icon in the top right hand corner of that dock and click on it. Next, we can go to this panel on the left hand side and you'll see that we have search and assistant and this is a shortcut to get into where we need to be if we were to click on that. Now, the longer way would be to start from the top here and then we would scroll all the way down until we see Google Assistant and you can see that it's enabled. That's a little bit misleading because as we've seen in our test, it doesn't actually work by voice. So we're going to click on this option. And then we're going to go to where it says, hey, Google, access your assistant. When you say, hey, Google, to save battery, choose on recommended. Your assistant will respond only when your device is plugged in or charging. And that's pretty important. So on recommended, the Google Assistant will only work by voice if your device is plugged in and charging and that saves battery. Now we're going to want to change that setting and we're going to want it to be always on. So based on what we just read with the on recommended setting, it makes sense that if you use the always on setting, of course, we should be able to use the Google Assistant by voice, regardless of the charging state of our device, but we may consume more battery. But now that we have this turned to always on, I'm going to minimize this window here and we're going to give the assistant a try. Okay, Google. So as you can see, Google Assistant is going to pull up here it's going to be very responsive. It's recording everything that I say. I'm wondering what the answer is that we're going to get from this long sentence that I have made. Just out of curiosity, we'll see what happens. Here's what I found. Face it, you're going to have to let them out the door sometime. I see we've been wrong in trying to do this without M&Ms. That's a book. Uh, that might be interesting. <laughs> so that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or I would buy, and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way you can show your support is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can show your support is just by clicking the subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important because those are ways to vote on whether you like the content. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. As always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon, check in out.